Welcome back to Card to Comics. And yes, today I am going to talk about baseball card exchange, but from a very different angle. First of all, I'm going to say we're all a bunch of hypocrites. Secondly, these kind of events are the Super Bowl for content creators to run around and act like the sky is falling because they get a point blame, laugh, and talk about how you know awful someone else is because that creates a lot of views. Thirdly, this has been going on in the hobby forever. And let's take this angle right off the bat, guys. If it wasn't for us as hobbyists trying to screw each other over by faking cards, by reselling product, by trimming cards, by creating fake cards, none of this crap would be necessary. We wouldn't need PSA. We wouldn't need SGC. We wouldn't need Baseball Card Exchange because we would all live in this perfect world where no one tries to rip anyone off, but we don't. So either face the facts of understanding that sometimes these companies are going to get it wrong. Sometimes we're going to have to live <clears throat> with uncertainty or just get a different hobby. Move out. Because acting like this is the most horrible thing that's ever happened is stupid. It's not what we want in this hobby for people to be unrealistic. Because if you try to act like everything's going to be perfect then you're going to fail. You're going to be miser miserable. And this is just not the place to be because we try to rip each other off. That's what the hobby is about. The golden rule of this hobby is the easiest way to make money is to rip someone off or to cheat. That's the easiest way to make money in this hobby. It's been that way forever. And you look at the companies like, you know, the auction houses, the grading companies, Everyone out there that makes a lot of money in this hobby, there's some questionable practices that go on from shill bidding to grading things that may should not be graded to giving influential influencers or other people better grades. These things have been around forever. But we don't think about that, right? We allow trimmers, scammers to be in this hobby forever, right? You know, the thing that's funny is I scroll down to all these overreactions to this issue. And you go down to this video right here where um, Jabs opens just recently a 77 Topps baseball box. The thing was completely real, right? Watch that video and you'll see what a real product looks like. So, and the other address to this issue that, you know, why this box may or may not have been real is look at this video and you'll see tons of cards coming out of this box damaged from a completely sealed product because how they pack cards, how the machines operated don't make perfect cards. And the idea of getting a PSA 7 out of the pack isn't that crazy when you look at these videos, right? But, you know, baseball card exchange, they're terrible, they don't know what they're doing, throw away, take everything off, throw it all away, fine. But, you know, we allow people like Ken Golden, who's one of the original scammers, to be in this hobby. Oh, and now he's got his own TV show? Okay. You know? That's fine. He's cool. We let that happen. PSA. Oh, what, you know, this idea that, you know, baseball card exchange doesn't do this properly. This should have a scientific method, you know, and they do have a method that's absolutely almost 100% foolproof, which is buying product or buying boxes right out of sealed cases. They designate if they open it from a sealed case. You can be almost 100% sure that product is real, right? You know, that is something that they can definitely give you a higher level of confidence. So that already exists. But this Frankenbox issue, which is one of those issues that's always been in this hobby, because unless you know it came from a sealed case, you don't know where every pack was and every pack been. So that Frankenbox issue could always be there. 86 Fleer, the easy thing to do is to look on the back of the pack look at the sequence and then replace every pack in a box with the sequences that don't lead to a michael jordan card now the sequence can flip in the pack and you'll get a few jordans which i think is actually what happened in this box i think someone went through and just looked at the back of every pack and pulled every pack that may contain the jordan but the sequence does flip sometimes does it explain the weirdness and the num names no and it could be completely resealed, right? But the fact that there's Jordans left in that box just doesn't mean, to me, that doesn't look like someone 
either someone stupidly resealed the product or it could have been some anomaly. It could have been a combination of both. Who knows? But they still found George's, and that's really weird if you're going to reseal something. But let's take Joel Orlando, PSA. Hey, we love PSA. They make us money. You know, what PSA said, what Joel Orlando said about it is, you know, their expectations, and he's talking about collectors, of human-based opinion surfaces is unattainable. There's limitations to what third-party services can do, and grading is not conducted in a science lab. It's simply humans looking at collectibles, and we're fallible. We're fallible, right? It's not human. It's not scientific. It's not computers, and that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants everything to be perfectly scientific, and some way to to analyze, you know, things to to, to um, atomic level. But you know, that's going to be super expensive. It's going to take years to grade anything. And you probably will still miss things. And that's the thing. There's no way to do this perfectly. But hey, you know, let's talk about other companies. Like SGC, hey, recently just graded a fake auto of Hank Aaron. Stupidly. It's one of the oldest scams in the book. You take a sticker off of, of a Topps card and pin on the back of another Topps card and forge the auto. <laughs> way to go, SGC. You can read this article on uh, blowout forms, but it's obviously a fake. You know, I talked about this card sometimes as well in a few videos about this uh, Topps Legends Willie Mays card that's been faked hundreds of times. Um, it keeps selling on eBay all the time. I know, I think some influencer just bought one, you know, and the majority of them are fake. Hey, it's fine, you know, fake autos. But this fake auto thing on SGC, you know, we don't want to cancel SGC because they graded this stupid fake auto. What about when SGC graded a bunch of, and PSA graded a bunch of T cards that had fake autographs and SGC actually canceled their autograph authentication services because of it. Did you know that P SGC doesn't authenticate autos, right? They assume that every autograph from 1998 to now is real. They don't even authenticate it. They just grade the auto. I wonder if that could ever cause an issue of wiped or fake autographs being in the hobby. Nah, I'm sure it's going to be 100% legit. We don't pay these companies enough money to make sure the autographs are real or not. Screw it. Hey, but these guys are cool. We're cool with SGC, right? Right? Everyone high five SGC. Awesome company. But Baseball Card Exchange, these guys are a bunch of assholes. Oh, what about this? Trimming scandal. That's that's old news. Like, that's only old cards. Wait, what? In May, we found that Trevor Lawrence contender cards were being trimmed? What? Oh my god. Modern cards are being trimmed. Oh my gosh. I am so shocked. I cannot believe that people are trimming modern cards. What? Oh, but PSA is cool, right? It's just not, it's just an opinion, guys. It's not scientific. You know, we're doing the best we can. Hey, don't cancel PSA. Cancel Baseball Card Exchange, right? You know, in 2008, you can go to articles like this one saying like, hey, on Sports Collector Daily, over half the product sold on eBay is fake, right? Half the product on eBay is fake. You know, that's us. That's not Baseball Card Exchange. That's us. We're faking it. So one of the things that you guys have to understand is Baseball Card Exchange did not make the fake box. So many people are saying they made the fake box. They didn't make it. They authenticated it. It's two different things. Some asshole wanted to make something fake. And it's been going on forever. And the only thing between us and the scammers and trimmers are companies like SGC, PSA, Baseball Card Exchange. And they're not perfect and they make mistakes, but there's a shit ton of bad stuff out there. And at least having some level of protection is better than none. And which is why we keep doing what we're doing. But did Baseball Card Exchange even invent grading? No, it was another company started by a former um, grader, Mike Baker, who does those stupid stickers on cards today. The Mike Baker sticker, which you see on cards today. He invented GAI, which invented pack rating. And then he stole everyone's stuff and then went bankrupt, right? You know, 
they basically didn't return stuff and they went under and you know they had depths between one debt debt between one and ten million dollars you know it, it just shows that like hey you know there was issues in this hobby forever that created the issues that we're dealing with and this idea of grabbing the pitchforks running after a baseball card exchange because they made mistakes you know if you're gonna do that do it to everyone you know do it to sgc for grading fake t cards autograph t cards fake autographs for not actually authenticating autographs from 1998 to now go after psa for the trimming scandals go after bgs for all the fake uh, modern cards and trim cards in their holder including lebron james exquisite rookie cards go after all these guys but if you're going to go after just baseball card exchange because they are the poster child for the issues that's fine because you know what it's easy to make fun of my uh, sorry steve hart because he I guess he just looks like someone that's easy to make fun of. And, you know, but we don't really need him because, hey, I don't really collect, you know, wax. So I can just I can just throw a bunch of bombs at this guy. Who cares? I need PSA. Don't go after that guy. Don't go after SGC. They're my they're my grading bros. I, I need them, but don't go after them, even though they make a ton of mistakes too. And that's where we're at. And that's why we're a bunch of hypocrites. You know, to me, I want everyone to do better. I want everyone, including baseball card exchange, to do better. But to sit there and say like they never make mistakes or they haven't ever made mistakes is stupid. And the fact that it's us, us, that makes the bad crap that they have to try to protect us against is why we have never fixed this issue and we'll never will. Because we only care about money for the most part in this hobby. And if money is the sole driver of what we do, then we're going to do whatever it takes, which I said, golden rule number one of the hobby, cheating and lying makes us the most money, then we're gonna have to have some line of defense. So pick what you want, guys. Either no line of defense, everything is just a free for all, and we go back to how it was in the late 80s where everything was basically half the crap out there was fake or trimmed or junk, or we have some level of confidence that makes the hobby go around. You, you guys pick. But to sit around and run around um, YouTube crying that the sky's falling, just to get some clicks and views, isn't it? You know? And again, let's go back to how this hobby works. Life sucks and then you die. That's sort of how the hobby is sometimes. It's not all going to be rainbows and kittens. So either you can figure it out and understand what level of risk you have in this hobby. Or you can get out and do something else. Because you're never going to have the level of security that you want that people are calling for. So you need to do as much learning and get as much knowledge yourself to protect yourself, but knowing that at some point you're probably going to get scammed or something bad's going to happen because that's how the hobby works. And I hate to be that negative, but seeing people just freaking out over this is just comical and it's silly when you got Ken Goldens, the PSAs, the SGCs of the world, the Mike Baker's still involved, Mike Baker's still around, you got the guys who are involved in WeeWag still selling cards. It never ends. We never get rid of any of these bad guys. And we wonder why bad stuff happens in the hobby. So that's it, guys. That's my take. I know it's a little negative, but, you know, everyone out there bashing Babes Hill Card Exchange versus looking at themselves and looking at the hobby in general needs to wake up. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.